Hello, hello, hello. Today we are doing the review of the Fairies and Magical Creatures Tarot Card Magic and Mysticism. Now with this deck here, I just bought it blindly off Amazon, pre-ordered it, and I thought, well, this looks pretty good. It's priced pretty well. You'll find that it's priced pretty good. It's the price on the review here. Mm, can I read that? $19.99 US. So it's pretty, pretty reasonably priced. And when I saw it, I wasn't thinking that it would be as beautiful as it is. And it is beautiful. It is terrific. You'll love it. Fantastic box. It is quite big. You know, for those of you who, you know, like, like storing things a lot smaller, you're in luck because the box, the deck actually comes in a smaller box. So, you know, you can always do away with this, but obviously where would you put the book? Where would you put the book? Now, the Fairies and Magical Creatures, I will talk about the cards itself. I'll show you the cards in a moment, but I'll also give you a few snippets. I've read with it today. I will show you a few cards and a few things that we got with the readings. So I'll put that to the side. It is illustrated by Otto Gabos. Very, um, what's the word? Comic. Um, quite cool, actually, if you go and check out his Instagram. And Francesca Mattignoni, you know, she's done a few decks. She has wrote a few, few decks. Francesca is an Italian poet, writer, and historian. Uh, she has illustrated the Ask the Witch Tarot, the Grunge Tarot, the Oracle of Novice Switches, and the Untamed Spirit Oracle. So I think she's pretty good. At, she's got it down pretty pat. She's got it down very, very very pat um, I think with the decks here now if we look at the reverse of the deck itself an invisible population lives alongside us thank you for subscribing the fair folk fairies sprites and other creatures we find them all around the world with different names but similar characteristics this deck is meant to broaden your knowledge of the world of fairies in that it does and magical creatures from different traditions around the world and to understand our reality through their stories and you can see a sample of the cards on the deck I am finding that um, in a few of the decks now they are showing sample cards so let's get started let's look into this deck and see what we've got now this is the card stock itself this is the reverse of the card it's quite pretty I'm finding these they are a bit thick um, they're a lot thicker than the radiant radiant wilds tarot that I've been using and they do do they snap into they pretty much snap into place there is no border with this deck. They are a, I want to say like a, a gloss finish, but not glossy as in reflective glossy, if that makes sense. The cards itself are word deal tailed and they've got the border on the bottom signifying what they are. Now the guidebook, you will love the guidebook. I actually want to call it a novel. I think actually they call it a manual, so it's quite different. So it is beautiful. In here you have the table of context. You've got about why and who the fairies are. You've got the major arcana. Now, as you can see here, you've got a full page of the actual card, which I love in full color. And then you've got about the card. Now, the, about the card does discuss about who is in the picture or what's going on in the picture. So this follows through right through. So that's all the major. And then you see the minor, the minor there. So you still got the full page there. And then you have at the back, which I enjoy, reading and interpreting the tarot cards, the spreads. You've also got little snippets. I love this key. You know, I have the art of the Art of Adventure Tarot, and I'll just show you the little booklet that comes with the Art of Adventure Tarot. This is it. And when I first got it, I thought, oh, this is one of the best decks I've ever read with. And it actually just comes with a few little lines, and that's all that, that I've been needing for that tarot. So this is pretty much the same. You have the description of the card itself and what it actually means, but you've also got a little key at the back. So if you are new to tarot, it's fantastic. You know, it, it's a really good de deck. I find it really good value. So let's have a look at the cards. Let's dive in and let's discuss them a bit deeper. So the booklet itself has a full rundown of each card. So as you can see, it's got labeled clearly the full and the name. And as we bring up the card, you know, you can clearly see that the picture is very much 
exactly like the card, which is great to see. So the reproduction of these decks is wonderful along with the guidebook. Now, it does talk about this fool here, you know, he can paralyze a human and he can stand on a rainbow. So it talks about in the booklet about each one, you know, for instance, the magician, you know, he's a cobbler, he's a leprechaun, you know, so he fixes the fairy shoes, but he can only fix one shoe, uh, you know. So it's quite interesting, the little stories. It's, it's telling me stuff that I probably should know but i can't remember you know we're going back a while you know when we spoke about like this so I, I find it really great i'm finding i'm learning a lot you know so it's really about him you know he hides his pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so it talks about different ones you know like for instance she's from the northeastern of italy you know she can be either beautiful or grotesque so it's just lovely the high priestess there the intuition the High Priestess, the Empress here, the Fauna, you know, the Lady of the Animals, the Roman Goddess, the Shapeshifter. Then we've got the Emperor here. He is a Scottish version of the domestic elf who takes care of some small tasks during the night in the home that hosts and hicks in exchange for a dish of cream. So I should start be putting out cream, shouldn't I? And I'll get all my dishes done. The Hereford. So in every tree, there's a spirit that lives and dies. Love this one. This is the lover's card. It's beautiful and weird in a, in a wild way, you know. So this is a North American um, it's where the storms brew, Nantucket, and the ocean, the dance, and the land, they're fighting. And, you know, if you stare closely in the vortex of the storm, you can see the two figures bickering and hugging at the same time. So it's quite cute. Chariot here. An enchanted pony from Celtic folklore. You can always see the, the wet tail and the mane. Seems very docile, but it will shake anybody off. The strength card, isn't that beautiful? That's Maria Sabina, the Mexican healer, Sabina. The priestess of mushrooms. Now, being a strand, an Irish background, I've never heard of that. So I'm finding it really interesting, a lot of these things. The hermit, this was brought up in a card tonight. The hermit is the lantern fairy, you know, not to rush. You know, have, you've got the tools of knowledge and, you know, you've got the wisdom there. Now, this came up in the reading about, it was about this lady, and I, and I do read her quite frequently, and this message keeps coming up about don't rush, don't rush, don't rush, don't rush. And, you know, time's not running out. You know, you stop torturing yourself, and she really wants to have children. So it was really about, you know, don't rush things. But the beautiful wheel of fortune here, the dollar, that's the spirit that protects destiny and appears in all forms. She ensures that humans do not go against fate, but rather respect it. So interesting, isn't it beautiful? This justice popped up and it pop, popped up in a quite a, quite a different way, you know. And uh, it was interesting because we think of justice as balance. But the justice, when I look at the book here... And again, you can buy this. I'll put all the links in the description box. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. But when I look in the book here, it's called Abaku. And he's a he's from Western Nigeria. Abaku is a child of brief mortal existence. But when I was reading this card for the woman, it had nothing to do with that. It was just, it was, and to me, instead of seeing this as a chair, I was seeing this as a doorway. And you've got this little fellow here standing in the doorway, very, very stiff. And it was a message here of, you know, they're not going anywhere. So to me, it was a message of either somebody ill or not well or frail and not to be scared. You know, they're definitely not going anywhere because he's standing here appearing to block the doorway. So that was the message there. We've got the hangman. This the selps. You know, she likes this. This, was, this is an interesting story because it talks about how... They take off the seal skin and they enchant a man who then steals their skin so she'll stay with the man. So it, it, interesting little stories in this one. The death card. It's about the European, you know, the belief that, you know, if the death, if their child dies, be taken by fairies. The temperance card. I do recall this one. It's about the Sandman. You know, the Sandman leaving, you know, coming in if you've left your window open and he throws magic sand into people's eyes and the greys, meaning you'll have nightmares and if it's gold, you'll have dreams. Devil here. 
So it's all about she gives poetic inspiration, but instead she'll take their life, you know, social exile sort of thing and early death. So that's interesting about the devil's story, you know, keeping you chained there, you know, so you can get something that's really, really good out of it, but, you know, you'll always be chained there. The tower, the banshee, the star, it's about the mythology all about the star at night the beautiful moon is a lovely story that's this is the japanese spirit fox and it's about the nine tails and how it's got magical abilities from the nine tails the sun the judgment card this is the scandinavian story about the domestic fairy who never forgot the woods and the world we've got the greek mythology pan he prefers the wood to the rich homes of the gods on Mount Olympus. So that's a major arcana. I must, I have to admit though, I, I do find the deck a bit hard for me to shuffle, but that's just because I'm used to smaller cards. We have a look at the cups here. The Otter Fairy. The Two of Cups came up in a beautiful reading. The gentleman had lost his wife. She was coming through in spirit and, and it was her, his soulmate, you know, so that was just lovely, lovely reading. Three seahorses and three fairies, you know, just reminding us we're not alone. Come meet us. This is an interesting one, the Four of Cups. It's really showing how dissatisfied, you know, he's got all these mirrors alone. He's dissatisfied. The Five of Cups, she can't see the water and the rainbow here. She's not noticing it. The Six of Cups is in the Indian jungle. You know, it's all about nostalgia and growing up and not betraying the childhood. You know, it's a challenge of living there. The Seven of Cups, it's all about opportunities. I'll have to put these down in a minute. The Eight of Cups is about, you know, opening our eyes to a situation. The Nine of Cups, wishes fulfilled. Ten of Cups, being lovable. We've got the Page of Cups there. This is the um, Puck from William Shakespeare. You know, he's, he's really putting havoc on both humans and fairies there. The Knight of Cups. So this is about Midsummer's Night Dream. The artist. Uh, Addison, who tries to be an actor in a stage performance, is quite cute, isn't it? The Queen of Cups came up in a reading. This was quite interesting. This is Titania. I think that's how you spell her name or pronounce it. Titania, the Shakespeare Queen of the Fairies. And how this came up in the reading was, uh, you know, I, I said, oh, you're very sentimental, you know. And I heard the word backbend and then I, I sort of I said, oh, you're going out of your way for people, you know, you're helping people all the time. And you can see there is a backbend. But for me, when I was thinking of backbend, I'm thinking of backwards. But she's going forwards. She's going out of her way to help everybody. But she's really neglecting herself and she's neglecting her own health. And that's what came up in the reading. The King of Cups, he's a delight, isn't he? Oberon. That's the cups, and then we'll move on to the wands. He's cute, the ace of wands. He's got his little ears pricked up. The two of wands is like choices in the tree. One's already up there, and one's got the sloth that stopped him. But which choice is any better than the other one? The four of wands is about, the, or the three of wands. The four of wands is about home. This was great. This came up in a reading and she just needed some confidence boosted and it was basically about I said oh you're all ready to party she was actually I've just arranged a party and I said well just know that everything's going to turn out okay and that's all she needed to know so it was a lovely little reading nice and short and sweet and gave her the confidence the five of wands is about competition the six of wands is about being victory you know humble and everything going good the seven of wands twilight there the Eight of Wands, it's about change, evolution, exciting journey. The Nine of Wands, this is all about people of differences and not to give up. So that's an interesting one. The Ten of Wands, 
it's really about you need to let go and this elf does not want to let go <laughs> but it's going to get run over so he's got to let go so like there's a time to give up the page of wands this is ariel the air spirit so this is from shakespeare the tempest you know it's about joy and shining and growth Knight of Wands. No one, nothing's ever too small to make a difference or nobody. The Queen of Wands. This is William Shakespeare again. Romeo and Juliet. And this is the Fairy of Dreams. And, you know, this is the chariot and she wakes people up with the nose there. And we've got the King of Wands. Tom, Tom Bomb, Bombavidis. This is Tom, the expert of nature. Fisherman, voyager of moss and berries. And Tom could be asking, but he's not interested in command, you know, he could be in control. And then we have the pentacles. Wow, they're just lovely cards, lots of fun, you know, fun little readings, nice and light. You know, it's sort of like there's nothing more fun than a mud bath. The two of pentacles. Three of pentacles did come up in a reading. Three of Pentacles came up in a reading. It was about trying something new, you know. It was about sharing knowledge and it's never too old to stop learning. And the man said, oh, I'm doing a social media course. And I said, well, this is about having confidence and, you know, you're going to get bigger and better and stronger. So that was a nice, nice reading there. Four of Pentacles, the Addict Fairy. The Five of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Look, he's helping, showing them... The mushrooms, you know, showing them where the mushrooms is. The Seven of Pentacles came up in the reading. You know, this is quite cute. The fairy's trying to put all these pots and pans to eventually reach the satellite. Not that there is any satellite in this picture, but that's what the book says. So this card was all about finances and, you know, slow and steady, you'll get there. The Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. Self sufficiency there. Ten of Pentacles is quite cute. You know, the fairies using the, the red ochre to paint the animals on the wall. Page of Pentacles. It's trapped in a tree. Who does that remind you of? The Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, I hope. What's this, uh, the fawn? And we've got the Queen of Pentacles, Messalina, medieval French legend. Oh, really interesting. Look at the bird there and the clothing. Interesting. And then we've got this guy here, the King of Pentacles, David Bowie in the movie Labyrinth. David Bowie, what an interesting man, hey? What a loss. What a loss. Absolutely, what a loss. And then we'll go through the swords. Truth, clarity, concentration, virtue. The two of swords, check him out. And it's sort of like this cloud is supposed to represent fear, you know, not to be fearful. The three of swords is the self collecting drops of blood from a wounded heart. Very interesting. Everyone that I notice on social media is always interested in how the Three of Swords is always depicted. So I've sort of, had, you know, I've been sort of like told or I've reminded myself to always look at that. The Four of Swords, physical health and restful healing. The Five of Swords come up, you know, um, we must force to express ourselves as long as it doesn't harm other people. And this was about... Um, making sure that you're communicating in a way that isn't aggressive or swearing. So that was quite interesting because you you need to be heard, but the way that you're putting your voice across isn't being heard. The Six of Swords, Seven of Swords, Eight of Swords, look at her there. You're stronger than fear. The Nine of Swords come up in a few readings. You know, this is about the nocturnal demons that visit sleeping people to torment them. You know, make put pressure on our chest. You know, who's had that? It's really about dealing with what's 
keeping you up at night and not putting it off. And we've got the Ten of Swords. It's all about disaster and it can't be recovered. The Page of Swords. Interesting. Oh, we all know this little fella. Rumpelstiltskin is my name. So, you know, spinning the straw to gold, but there's always a catch. The Snow Queen here. She kidnapped little Kai and Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale. And then we've got the King of Swords. So that is the deck there. Talking about the few readings that I've done, so I hope that you've enjoyed this deck. I, I must say that it is a bit more difficult than what I'm used to with shuffling. You know, it, it, it isn't the easiest, I think, because it's just a tad, not huge, but just a tad bigger than what I'm used to, you know, so you can shuffle this. But let's pull a card if you're watching this today, tomorrow, in the future. See what message, and I'll read the entire page out of the book to give you an idea of what you can expect. Now the book says two close-up scenes in one. The hunters advance in their weekly fun. In the other, a fairy gathers three wolves around him for a day. They will not be predators, but will warn the animals to take refuge. They will not be killed. The Nine of Wands is a great example of resistance. It invites us to take part in an effort, personal or collective, against injustice. Here, the courage of the fight is a retreat that unites people despite differences before a common enemy. Keep this card nearby when evil threatens. You are tired, but do not give up. Strength is a fragile thing. It is found among the voiceless when they raise their heads up. Beautiful. So I hope that you enjoy this deck. Don't forget, please like and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see. This is my latest deck. We're having lots of fun with it. So I hope that you do too. Until, until again. Until we meet again.